Mitsubishi is certainly a company that has had some ups and downs, bringing us great cars like the Evo or Eclipse, only to discontinue it all in favor of crossovers. However, there's no denying that over the years, Mitsubishi has flown under the radar, putting out some really good engines. Many of them produce tremendous power or torque for their displacement while remaining efficient and reliable, earning a sizable enthusiast following along the way. That said, not all of them are equal. So today, we'll be ranking every Mitsubishi inline 4 engine, including diesels, to see which of them comes out on top. Let's get started. Starting things off is the KE4, which is part of a larger family that includes inline 6 engines with the same architecture. The KE4 engines were all iron and rather heavy, with both gasoline and diesel variants available. Small trucks were the primary application, however some unique ones existed in the form of the 1960s Jeeps. Also, just for reference throughout the video, Mitsubishi's naming scheme usually works with the first number being the cylinder amount, the following letter denoting fuel type, succeeded by two numbers, the first denoting engine family and the second the particular variant. The KE4 being Mitsubishi's first four-cylinder engine did not follow this, but most of the later engines do. There isn't much to say about the KE4, it was reliable from what I can find, but quite underpowered, and Mitsubishi would put out better engines soon after. The C tier is appropriate. After production of the KE4 ended, Mitsubishi launched the 4G3, where the naming scheme first became relevant. The 4G3 was the first to use an aluminum head, as well as the implementation of dual overhead cams in the later models. Most were naturally aspirated, but the 4G32T used a turbo attempting to get better fuel economy with higher power. This particular engine only put out 110 horsepower from a 1.6 liter frame, but was extraordinarily efficient and didn't have many issues. A unique feature of the 4G3 is that it began with a timing chain, but later engines changed to a timing belt. Almost always with manufacturers, we see this done the other way around, as time has proven chains to be a more robust solution. Why this was done is unclear, although I would guess it was either a cost-saving effort or an attempt to make the engines quieter. A three-decade production run was made by the 4G3 thanks to its efficiency and reliability, making it a very typical Japanese engine of the late 20th century. The 4G3 will fall into the B tier. Next up is the 4G4, which ran production alongside the 4G3 in the 1970s. This was a smaller pushrod engine, and Mitsubishi's last of this valve train configuration. Surprisingly, this engine had to be discontinued in favor of the 4G1 that we'll cover later due to emissions issues. Considering how little power and displacement is involved, poor emissions is an odd characteristic for the 4G4. Over time, these essentially became forklift engines as better options arose for automotive applications. From the little information on them, the 4G4 doesn't seem to be unreliable, just not particularly useful for automotive use. Although they do alright in forklifts, given the context of ranking these for automotive use, I'll be putting the 4G4 into the D tier. The 4G5 was yet another engine that began production in the 70s. It saw many changes over the years, with different valve trains, fueling systems, and aspiration types available across the entire series. The most powerful was the largest 4G54, displacing 2.6 liters and was given the most applications of any 4G5 by a long shot. Unfortunately for many of the owners, it quickly became evident that the 4G54 didn't get along very well with its head gasket, destroying it at rather low mileage. This was one of the first ever Japanese engines to feature electronic fuel injection, but it was poorly executed. The multi-point system struggles to evenly distribute fuel, causing the engine to run a little rough at times. Airflow is also very restricted from the single overhead cam that actuated two valves per cylinder, pulling air through a constrictive intake manifold. It must be said that the 4G54 was the most problematic, and some of the other smaller 4G5s had a better reputation. There was definitely potential with the 4G5, but it seems Mitsubishi hadn't fully executed on it yet so the 4G5 will go into the C tier. What I meant by Mitsubishi not making the most of the 4G5 yet is something that's answered with the 4D5 engine. The 4D55 and larger 4D56 are diesel engines found either naturally aspirated or turbocharged, and they're based on the 4G5 design and structure. 
Many of the issues regarding airflow were worked out here due to the implementation of a turbo. Now dealing with more airflow, the 45 has better manifold flow, dual overhead cams and four valves per cylinder, allowing these diesel engines to properly breathe. The head gasket setup is also more stout as a product of being a diesel engine and needing to handle that super high 21 to 1 compression ratio found in both the 4D5 engines. Direct injection was also utilized, and most of the turbo variants were intercooled. Over the years, the 4D56 in particular has become known for hitting 300,000 miles somewhat regularly. It's worth noting that the cooling system reliability is on the poor side, and failures within it can lead to cracked heads or seized turbos. When maintained, however, the 4D5 is an efficient, high-torque workhorse, and the maximum potential of the original 4G5 design. The 4D5 will be our first entry to the A tier. The successor to the 4G4, the 4G1 was Mitsubishi's next to fill the shoes of a small and efficient engine offering. This time around, the 4G1 proved far more usable in automobiles, and has been around for almost five decades as a result. Across this period, it has powered small economy cars or been a smaller and cheaper option in bigger vehicles that offer multiple engine choices. The 4G12 is notable for coming with a turbo, but the 4G15 is easily the most impressive. In its Apex format, it made 197 horsepower out of a 1.5 liter frame, breaking that magic 100 horsepower per liter barrier. Chinese cars use the 4G15 in the present, proving it to be a timeless design. They also succeeded in being efficient, particularly in the later models with variable valve timing included. On paper, sure, the 4G1 might not make massive power, but how much it does with such a small package is an engineering marvel, and there is an ample reason why it's one of the longest-running Japanese engines of all time. I think the 4G1 earns the A tier. Now the reason you're watching this video, the 4G6 is easily the most popular engine Mitsubishi has ever put out. The 4G63 in particular is renowned for its extensive usage in their most high-performing vehicles. It's found in every Evo prior to the final generation, the Eclipse, and the Eagle Talon. Most of Mitsubishi's racing efforts were fueled by the 4G63 as well, winning the World Rally Championship four times in a row. When you take a minute to consider just how hard an engine in a rally car gets beat, that definitely says a lot. Over time, the 4G6 was thrown into more applications than I could even fit here, and no matter which variant you get, it will be reliable with a strong top-end power band. The later Evos received forged internals, allowing a one-off variant called the FQ400 to make 400 horsepower out of a 2-liter engine. 100 horsepower per liter is remarkable and very challenging to do from a design perspective, but 200 is completely outrageous. Now yes, it is true that most 4G6 engines aren't as good as the 4G63, but they all share the same general design and architecture, one plenty worthy of the S tier. Like the 4G5, the 4G6 also got a diesel spin-off. Designed to replace the 4D5, the 4D6 was intended to shift diesel applications to commuter cars instead of larger work vehicles. Each of the two 4D6 engines were turbocharged with an even higher compression ratio of 22.4 to 1. This meant tremendous fuel efficiency was achieved, also due to extremely conservative tuning, which was sensible for the 4D6's smaller vehicle applications. It's also worth mentioning that two smaller engines known as the 4K1 and 4K2 were created from the 4G6 design, but are exclusively produced by Chinese manufacturers rather than Mitsubishi. Although the 4D6 is a solid engine with minimal issues, its performance figures are far less than that of the 4D5, and many Mitsubishi enthusiasts suggest the 4D5 as the more desirable engine. Thus, the 4D6 will go just below it in the B tier. The 4G9 is one of Mitsubishi's more modern inline-4 engines, running in the late 90s and early 2000s. It's a very conventional Japanese engine for this time period, now running dual overhead cams with variable valve timing. Learning from the issues with the multi-point gasoline injection system of the past, the 4G9 also received a stout direct injection system. A turbo can be had with the 1.8 liter 4G93, getting 212 horsepower as the most powerful 4G9 engine available. Applications were quite diverse by vehicle type, and the Malaysian auto manufacturer Proton borrowed the 4G9 for usage in sedans. 
There's nothing bad to say about the 4G9. It's seemingly reliable, efficient, and smooth. However, on the flip side, it doesn't do anything out of the ordinary and is a very average Japanese inline-4 engine of the time period. This description best fits the B tier. Alright, we're finally done with the 4G engines, as well as the naming scheme that's associated with them being a G or a D depending on fuel type. That said, the 4A3 is a super small gasoline engine. It was only put in a few K cars and made such little power that these cars could barely reach 100 km per hour downhill. Up to 70 miles per gallon is possible with the 4A3, so that's certainly a bonus and a byproduct of one of the first utilizations of auto start stop when at idle. There are regulations in Japan regarding how large an engine is allowed to be in a K car, so I can't knock it too much for the lack of performance. However, we are ranking it relative to everything else here, so the C tier makes the most sense. The 4A9 is a very modern 4-cylinder that Mitsubishi offers, and its design characteristics align well with the company's more recent ideology, which seems to be efficiency and lack of emissions as a priority. Mitsubishi claims that all airflow passages such as the intake and exhaust manifolds were optimized for maximum efficiency. I'm guessing this was most likely done using CFD or computational fluid dynamics, which enables the creation of a virtual model for each component with airflow characteristics and flow patterns calculated throughout the inside of the part. To reduce the weight of the 4A9 as well, Mitsubishi made this their first ever engine to utilize a full aluminum construction, with both the head and block using casting for mass production manufacturing. All engines also include variable valve timing to further promote efficiency. For what Mitsubishi was seemingly after here, the design requirements were met. I can certainly appreciate the technological advancements made with the 4A9, and believe it deserves the B tier. The successor to the 4G6 engine, the 4B1 is another of Mitsubishi's finest. It's a far more technologically advanced platform, although it was produced much later. Features include 4 valves per cylinder, actuated by dual overhead cams with variable valve timing present for both the intake and exhaust camshafts. Both the block and head are cast aluminum, and some 4B1 engines come with a turbo. Each 4B1 makes immense power for its displacement, particularly the 4B11 found in the EVO 10. This 4B11T has a semi-closed deck block to enable more boost pressure while retaining reliability. Another improvement was made from the 4G63, with the transition to a timing chain from a belt, eliminating a maintenance item and potential expensive failure point. Now even though the 4B11 gets the most attention, the 4B12 has flown under the radar as potentially the most reliable engine that Mitsubishi has ever made. It's larger than the 4B11 with a 2.4 liter displacement, but no turbocharger. The result is a super smooth power delivery that is low stress on the internals, helping overall longevity. Immense power, reliability, and technological advancement are present with the 4B1, earning it a spot in the S tier. Following the 4B1 was the 4J1, which aimed primarily to have as little carbon dioxide emissions as possible. It was Mitsubishi's first engine to introduce variable valve lift, as well as an exhaust gas recirculation system. Application of the 4J1 was very limited, only being used in a few regions worldwide across a handful of vehicles. It is indeed incredibly efficient, and I haven't found any complaints of reliability concerned. For a modern day engine, the performance figures are sluggish at best, and paired with a crossover application like the Outlander, you can bet that the 4J1 feels quite weak. However, for the efficiency of the engine and the fact that Mitsubishi directly achieved the primary design goal, the 4J1 will still fall into the B tier. The 4B4 only consists of the 4B40, based primarily on the 4A9 but also taking much of the design from the 4B11 just with a smaller bore. A rather large turbo is fitted to the 4B40, meant to get performance figures to match the likes of the 4B12 that it was intended to replace, but with better fuel efficiency and a smaller package. While the performance might not pop out on paper, it is a 1.5 liter engine, and makes 107 horsepower per liter. On top of that, although its production run has been quite short, many report it to be ultra reliable. There isn't much more to cover here as the design is so similar to the 4A9 and 4B11, but I think I'll give the 4B40 the benefit of the doubt and place it into the A tier as a product of its specific power production and similarity to the 4B11. 
Our final two engines are both diesels, with the 4M4 being the larger of the two, and actually one of the largest four-cylinder engines ever produced. This is almost exclusively a truck and SUV engine thanks to its very respectable torque production, especially in a turbo diesel variant. Horsepower is definitely subpar considering the displacement, but thankfully the 4M4 is extremely reliable. Modern diesel engines are generally choked down by countless emissions mechanisms that compromise reliability and somewhat defeat the purpose of a diesel engine. But the 4M4 starting production in the 90s was early enough to avoid this fate, and the reliability has been very positive as a result. This is a solid engine all around, and worthy of the upper B tier. You can make the argument that the 4M4 should have been in the A tier, but the 4N1 is the reason why it isn't. Still produced today, the 4N1 is significantly lighter than the 4M4, thanks to both an aluminum block rather than a cast iron one and a significantly smaller displacement. Yet despite that, this stout turbo diesel puts out more power and torque than the 4M4. Now the 4N1 also shares a reputation for reliability, and it's honestly one of the better diesel engines that you can find in modern times. A wide variety of vehicles from many companies can be found powered with a 4N1, usually a sign of a good design when other companies choose to use it as the engine to borrow. Mitsubishi really makes a good diesel engine and always has from what we've seen in this list. Their most recent in the 4N1 is certainly worthy to wrap things up in the A tier. There is every Mitsubishi inline 4 engine with diesels included ranked out. I can honestly say it was hard to find any terribly bad engines here, and most lists do have a few that stick out while researching. Mitsubishi really does produce quality in the reliability department. Although their engines may not be the most exciting, they are worthy of appreciation. I really enjoyed making this video, so let me know if there's anything that I missed or anything that you would change. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel for the upcoming engine lists as well as my car reviews and other series. Thanks for watching and have a great day.